But first, a reminder about our brand new giveaway. We're giving away a PS5 with a copy of NBA 2022 and Madden 22. All you have to do is watch the full video, leave a like, comment the keyword hidden in the video, and make sure you're subscribed. It's that simple. Big Baby really seems to have lived up to his nickname after repeatedly breaking the terms of his bail agreement, getting caught each time, and not letting up. The NBA champion decided to cross state lines and attend a game down in Boston and ended up on the big screen screen without ever touching the ball. Let's take a look at the legal troubles Glenn Davis has been having for the past couple of years now and talk about the path that has led to an official final warning from the New York courts threatening to put him behind bars. First and foremost, why Davis broke bail again? What's wrong with a retired NBA player cheering on his former team from the stands? It wasn't surprising to see Glenn Davis, who played four seasons with the Boston Celtics, in the stands for his former team's matchup against the Miami Heat. The ABC broadcast even featured him on screen. Maybe because it makes sense to see former players cheering their team on, but maybe because Glenn wasn't supposed to be there. Big Baby was legally barred from attending the game, and all games were not hosted within the state lines of California and New York. Big Baby is one of 18 NBA players who are facing trial for their alleged attempt to defraud the NBA's health and welfare benefit plan. Creating fake receipts and medical expenses for almost four years added up to a total of $4 million collectively. That's a lot of money even for the NBA. Davis paid paid $200,000 for his bail on the condition that his travel is restricted to New York and California only. This is why it shocked everyone, most of all being the Manhattan federal judge who was kicking back on his couch and enjoying the game that night. The judge gave him quite an earful afterward, along with an official notice, inquiring why he was seen casually sitting in the seat in the TD Garden. If we were in Davis's spot, we'd be a bit more careful with skipping bail and avoid the camera. Wouldn't be caught dead at any of these games surrounded by so many cameras. Secondly, who knows? and what are the consequences? Honestly, who was Baby trying to fool? He's an NBA champion in the middle of a case with the organization at his own team's game. He was spotted immediately by cameras, social media, and the ABC broadcast, so literally everyone noticed. Those who didn't see him in person saw him on the big screen or at home on television when ABC kept panning to him. Davis must have thought that there was no way he would be caught again supporting his team, right? Maybe he thought the third time was the charm, right? Well, the Respect the Logo t-shirt meant to diss Kyrie Irving certainly didn't help keep him out of the spotlight. This being Glenn's third violation of parole after he attended the Celtics vs. Nets game and attended Kevin Garnett's retirement party, the Manhattan federal judge probably thinks Glenn is treating his judgment with impunity. To put it nicely, Judge Valerie Caproni was not happy to say the least, and in a hearing on Tuesday said, you have fouled out in basketball terms. Caproni made it clear that Davis was going to get caught because he's all over social media and urged the star to just follow the rules till his hearing. So if Davis wants to tune in to any more of the Celtics games, he better do it from the comfort of his couch, unless he wants to cheer for them from behind bars. Additionally, why does the champ keep getting caught? The champ doesn't just attend the games, he makes a statement. To attend Kevin Garnett's jersey retirement ceremony, an event that had more media than the games he attended, isn't something you do as a mistake, especially if you've been warned before. Glenn also does surprisingly little to lie low anyway, being one of the players honored during the game since Davis was part of the legendary 2000 2008 squad that brought banner number 17 to Beantown. The next time Davis caused migraines for his legal team was when he made his presence well known at the Celtics face-off against the Nets in May. Not only did he wear a Respect the Flag shirt, specifically to target Kyrie Irving, who himself made headlines by stomping on the logo in a previous meeting between the two teams, but he was also seen mouthing off against Kevin Durant. And of course, in his hopefully final appearance supporting Beantown, he was in attendance for the Celtics face-off against the Heat, where he decided to get a central seat and be vocal in his support. The thing is, there are so many people at these games that it'd be the easiest thing in the world for him to just disappear in the bleachers. Let his team know he's there to extend moral support, but stick to the shadows. So it's either that Davis doesn't care if he gets caught, doesn't believe they'll send him to jail over attending a game, or maybe he just hates missing games. Moving on, the NBA health insurance fraud in question. Apart from Davis, there are some pretty big names involved in the scandal, including six-time all-defensive team member Tony Allen, along with his wife Desiree, who is the only non-player to be charged in the case. Now, Davis may have been the only NBA champion in on the scheme, but he was by no means the mastermind. That honor goes to Terrence Williams, the man several of the members have reported to be the supplier of fake invoices in exchange for indictment kickbacks. Williams made over $230,000 for his role in scamming the NBA for $3.9 million with a $2.5 million payout. All 18 players, plus one, are now charged with wire fraud and conspiracy to defraud the NBA's 
health benefits plan. In addition, Williams, the so-called linchpin of the operation, has been charged with aggravated identity theft. Yep, he tried to impersonate a plan employee as a ruse to pressure and influence his co-conspirators, maybe convincing them to stay part of the operation. And that's not all, folks. It's not just the NBA. Three former National Football League players, including two-time Pro Bowler and former Rookie of the Year Clinton Portis, recently pled guilty for their roles in a nationwide plan to defraud a similar health care benefit program for retired NFL players. The total 10 defendants in that case were indicted in 2019, and five other retired NFL stars have been found guilty of the same crime since. It was smaller than the NBA scandal, though, with Portis's payout being the highest in the new case at nearly 100 grand. Let's talk about how the group got caught. To be fair, you can't expect basketball players to be criminal masterminds, but the group was a bit too careless with the invoices they were submitting. More accurately, Terrence Williams was too careless, considering he was the one supplying everyone with fake receipts. He even made up letters of medical necessity so Davis, Watson Jr., and Antoine Wright could charge the NBA for fake services. The problem is, Williams didn't focus on the formatting in his letters, or spelling, or grammar. Eventually, the NBA caught on to a pattern of the same mistakes, showing up for the same people repeatedly. What's more, the letters were being sent out on the same days, but from different offices. Even when some of the players wanted out, Williams impersonated a person of authority on the phone to intimidate them. It wasn't all Terrence, though. SDNY U.S. Attorney Audrey Strauss pointed out other major errors in the story, like Gregory Smith's dental expenditures. The NBA star had gotten a root canal from an expensive Beverly Hills dentist while being in Taiwan at the time for a game. Strauss gave us some juicy tidbits of evidence in her interviews, like some of the claims were from identical procedures on the same day. You guessed it, root canals. Maybe basketball players should stick to the court. Next up, Glenn's partners in crime. So who all did mastermind Terrence Williams, 11th pick for the New Jersey Nets in 2009, recruit for his grand scheme? Other than Mr. and Mrs. Tony Allen, Sebastian Telfair, a former player for the Portland Trailblazers, Minnesota Timberwolves, and six other teams from 2004 to 2013 was in on it. We know about Big Baby Davis, but there was also the number three draft pick from 2000, Darius Miles, as well as Reuben Patterson. Jamario Moon and Sebastian Telfair submitted fake invoices and insurance claims and were part of the 16 players arrested in 12 districts across the entire country on Thursday, as reported by Assistant Director of the FBI Michael Driscoll. Former Washington Wizards player Alan Anderson felt the cold cuffs click around his wrist, as well as Shannon Brown from the Cleveland Cavaliers. That's a wrap for this video. Do you think Davis is going to try to skip bail again? And will he get caught doing so? Let us know how you feel about this entire fiasco in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe for more NBA updates.